Hey everybody, welcome back to the Rochester Real Estate Show. Anthony Butera, Jason Mancuso, the Anthony Butera team at Keller Williams Realty. It's been a minute. Yeah. We've had a lot going on in the real estate industry. There's a lot of news headlines. We wanted to take the opportunity to get on here and provide some clarification, some information, details, etc. cetera, uh, as to what's going on in the real estate industry that, that you may or may not be aware of. Some people are, some people aren't, I guess, right? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to start with kind of a, uh, because this is referencing ongoing lawsuits and settlements and litigation, and things of that nature, it's important that we do have kind of a, a you know, disclaimer to, to tie it into this. Yeah. First one being is that if, if you're an, a real estate agent listening to this, um, please consult with your brokerage. Uh, your board of realtors, your state, um, all the you know regulations, laws, policies, procedures are going to be unique to all of that state, local, and the brokerage that that, that you're partnered with. So that was, that was a nice cover our ass disclosure. Yeah, that's that's what we're doing here to start. So, so with that said, don't take any uh, any advice from this professionally as an agent. Um, Second uh, CYA would be uh, there's there's going to be reference to real estate commissions in this. If there is any specific reference to a commission amount, know that that is uh, just a fictitious example yeah. and and not anything that, that is uh, standardized or uh, setting or fixing commissions in the industry in general. Yeah. Fair? Fair. All right. Um, so... With all that said, I guess it's important to, to kind of, why do we need to leave this show with a CYA statement and a legal disclaimer? Yeah, so uh, almost a couple of years ago, there was a class action lawsuit filed. Um, it was in Kansas City, uh, where it was a seller's class action lawsuit. And the seller's position was that um, generally, um, sellers were responsible for paying compensation to buyer's agents, right? So that real estate agent, that real estate professional that was representing the buyer, uh, it's been customary, we could say, uh, in the past that the sellers were responsible for that, right? So that's where it all started. Now, there was never a fixed amount. Commissions have always been negotiable. Where it got a little sticky was most real estate transactions that take place in the United States, residential real estate transactions, and when I say most, 99% plus real estate transactions that do take place, um, they're listed in the MLS. The MLS is the Multiple Listing Service. It's a database that all realtors in that local real estate board utilize to, to search houses, set up searches for their clients, gather information from not just their own listings, but cooperating brokers' listings as well, right? It's that central website that we've all been working off of, and it's worked really well. And it populates to every other website. Auto populates. For the most part. So if you're if you're seeing a home for sale, if you just Google a street address that you're interested in that you yeah. know is for sale, and then you see it on Zillow, on every single, you know, websites you've never yeah. even heard of, that's because of the MLS. Without the MLS's IDX feed, none of those websites would ever be able to capture those listings like they do in real time. So with that being said, the issue has been a field. In the MLS, we had to put a dollar amount of compensation. We were limited to a minimum compensation in the past of what? One dollar? One dollar. That was the minimum you could put you could put into that box when you're uploading a listing, right? So there had to be a cooperating fee coming from the sellers, or I should say the listing um, brokerage that we were offering in compensation. So although when you, when you watch the news and you see this story come up, it's going to continue to come up, especially after the August 17th cutoff date, you're going to just see the big headlines. And this is why people get so hung up. Now I see it front and center, why people get hung up on what they feel is fake news or manipulated news. Um, the the truth, and I don't want to sound like Trump there, but it was just an example. But the, um, the truth is what you're going to hear a lot of is, Hey, sellers, you never have to pay commissions again. Or, hey, both parties, uh, commissions are going to be substantially less than they were before. 
A, we got to be very careful with how we're digesting that news. Here's what I can tell you. Um, we have a lot of hardworking agents here at Keller Williams Realty and on the Anthony Butera team. Um, they're hardworking. They don't do volunteer work. So there's going to be an expectation of compensation um, from these agents. Where that's coming from may look a little bit different in some cases. So let's let's provide some clarity. Yeah. Essentially, this lawsuit, class action lawsuit, you mentioned yep. starting in Missouri, um, uh, um, against the National Association, Association of, of Realtors. Realtors. And the NAR, or National Association yeah. of Realtors. National Association of Realtors is kind of that governing, advocating body for real estate agents. Um, they established a standard of practice that we all must fo uh, follow. Um, and that, you know, keeps us in line of what, like, morals aside, ethically what we're bound to and how we are supposed to treat our clients. And also, if you want MLS access to practice yep. being a realtor, you are a member of NAR. Uh, as of now. I would state that that's subject we'll, we'll, to change we'll after this lawsuit. All right. So then, furthermore, yeah. So we've got the defendants, we've got the yeah. plaintiffs. The ultimately the case was brought on because and class action attorneys, good for them. Capitalism. Uh, that's mean, your. <laughs> they, 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 I don't feel that way, yeah. but okay. They, yeah. they rec what I mean by that is they recognize the opportunity. Yeah, they found the out. opportunity to capitalize on was that be in order to be listed on the MLS yeah. as a seller, yeah. in order for a listing agent to list the property on behalf of a seller yeah. on the MLS, it is required that you offer a co broke compensation a cooperating compensation to another agent representing the buyer. Yes. It's a requirement. Yeah. Even though it's always been negotiable, yeah. even though it could have been as little as a dollar, yeah. but it basically meaning nothing, Yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, a dollar, but yeah. not nothing. But that's where that's where the case was won and lost. Yeah. Because of that tie to, in order to be on the MLS listed as a seller, yep. you have to offer cooperating compensation. C correct. These changes were not made based on uh, realtor self-reflection of, hey, listen, we've been doing this wrong, so here's how we have to do it. This was, these changes are abiding by a class action lawsuit that was agreed upon um, for anybody that is members of the National Association of Realtors and any privately owned MLS, which in Rochester and in, in Buffalo, uh, we are privately owned MLSs. So the premise of the lawsuit, or or you know what, I don't know, case law it falls under, I guess, or whatever. But yep. it, it's it's antitrust. Yep. It's collusion concepts. Yep. It's essentially okay if you're a realtor listing a home for sale representing a seller. Yeah. And now as a requirement of this compensation needing to be offered, even though it's negotiable and it could have been as low as a dollar, yeah. if you're now requiring the compensation of another party to the transaction yeah. that you're not representing or that you're not a party to as a seller mm -hmm. with a buyer or a buyer's agent, yeah. that opens the door for antitrust collusion, those yes. types of concepts. Yep. And that's that's the description of the lawsuit, essentially sure. why we're in this position. Correct. Yep, that's the argument. Um, and it was successful for the class action attorneys, right? right? Um, do I feel that there's changes to our industry that um, could take place that would put um, agents and consumers in a better place? Outside of this lawsuit, yeah, I think that there are. Um, there's with with any changes, there's unintended consequences. I don't know how much you want to dive in there, but um, and which which means that things are subject to change even and, after this. And I think everything right now is is kind of assumptive or hypothetical, right? Yep. So I think I think I think we can wrap up the future conversation, right? As like there there's likely to be plenty of good that comes from this and likely that's yes. plenty of plenty of bad that comes yeah. from this too yeah it affects both all sides sellers buyers yeah. realtors listing agents buyers agents brokerages yep. any are the consumer as a whole etc yeah it, it's going to be an interesting case study no doubt 
Now, so lawsuit, uh, uh, you know, uh, jury, the whole nine yards, right? Yeah. Like big deal, you know, verdict uh, did not go in favor of uh, the defendants, yep. NAR and a, and a number of, uh, of large big, real big, estate, big brokers. brand real estate companies. Yep. Um, that was then, uh, a settlement was then negotiated. Yes. Uh, the major points of that settlement, aside from a, a whole bunch of compensation awarded, yeah. uh, which, which you know, is, is kind of comical how that plays out, which we won't necessarily get into here. Yeah. But um, the, the, the meat and potatoes of the settlement is essentially the, the uh, NAR stating, okay, we're going, in order to be a member of NAR, we are going to require the following changes in order to, to, to do so and take advantage of the membership. Yes. Two major things from this. One, effective August 17th nationally in every single market. And, and it's already happening. For example, Rochester is yeah, August 15th. Yeah. Um, you know, other markets have been a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Nationally, it just varies. But the cutoff date, as you mentioned, is August 17th. Yeah. Um, all reference to compensation is off the MLS in full. Any reference trying to be sneaky yep. or direct is is going to open up a, a further legal problems you, for whoever is doing it. You said it. anything directly or indirectly yep. that we can't allude to, we can't try and get fancy to, to give a, a hunch of if the sellers are offering compensation uh, at all or in any, any amount, correct. So no longer exists in the MLS. So the, the previously, it wouldn't necessarily be something that the consumer uh, had was access aware to. of or had access to in most spots. But realtors would, would be aware of the compensation that the seller was offering, if any. And we were protected if it was in the MLS right. and you went under contract. You were protected by the amount that that listing brokerage had listed for cooperating compensation. So that's going away. Gone. Nobody's going to be able to see it. There will still be listing agreements, of course, between yep. seller and listing agent yeah. where compensation is established. Yep. And, and established by an agreement, yeah. meaning that you know parties are tied to it, um, but it's not going to be visible to the uh, to the public at all, and you know specifically the the realtor population public that's going away. Yep. So big changes of practice for individual agents and brokerages. Yeah. Uh, you know from what they're used to of of you know looking at, at a property that their buyer is interested in and just knowing what the compensation is being offered and knowing that 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 you know meets the the uh, what they charge. Yeah. Right? Yeah. The other major change, more consumer related. Yeah. Very interesting. Is that moving forward starting August 17th at the latest, if you're a buyer and you want to see a home with a realtor on a private tour, you are required to be under a buyer agency agreement of some sort. Yep. And it is policy, law, like an agent cannot show you a home at a private showing without having some sort of buyer agency agreement established. No doubt. And this is this is not just NAR. We're bound by the state. This yes. is equivalent to an unlicensed driver driving their vehicle. I, I love that analogy. Because this is, yeah, it, it, you know, I mentioned. You're risking your license. The national uh, is the NAR state. Yep. You know, essentially it, it flows down to the state yep. where they're going to establish the license law that we have to abide by as yeah. professionals uh, and now now here we are uh, you know having an effect on the consumer with it yep so just to clarify you don't need to have one of these to go to an open house you do not if you're calling an agent that you know if you're submitting an inquiry online yep. a website for a listing that you see that you're interested in and, and and get connected with an agent, whether it's a listing agent or, or a third party yep. uh, or, or another party, um, the response from here, from August 17th on, will be, hey, I'd love to help you. I'm paraphrasing, we need to talk about agency yep. and how it works. And, and it was what, spelled and, out and, in that agreement. And, and in order for me to show you this home, we need to establish uh, uh, some sort of an agreement to start. Now, 
it there, there's various types of buyer agency agreements. Yeah. There's, you know, what what most agents are going to want to prefer to get at some point is an exclusive uh, buyer agency agreement, meaning that that buyer is working exclusively with that agent. Uh, a term is established. The the duties uh, of what the agent is, is going to do are established by, yeah. by essentially entering into this agreement. Uh, the duties of the buyer as well. And compensation, most importantly, is established. Yes. So everything is transparent, above board, whatever you want to call it, right from the start. And now you're off working with your agent and, and finding the, the perfect situation for you. Yeah. There can also be a non-exclusive agreement uh, that would more so apply to, I think this is how the industry is going to play out from, or, or one aspect of it in, in that like, hey, you're, you, I'm the agent, you're calling me. Hey, I get it. We've never met. You don't know me. Yep. Yeah, we don't even know if we want to work together. I'd be happy to show you this home. Yeah. We do need to have an agency agreement of some sort. Yep. So we can enter into a non-exclusive agreement or, or you know, there's other options in terms of like individual property showings. You could have it an agreement be, for just that one showing be, of that one home. It could be for a day. It could be for a weekend, yep. a week, a year, whatever. Yep. Uh, but you have to have some sort of an agreement with yeah. an agent in order to see a home privately. Yep. There's state law essentially at this point, right? Yeah. Um, and, and, and I will say this, um, I don't agree with how this is being uh, laid out for us, right? I, I, the, the, the analogy I keep using is um, it'd be pretty awkward to bring an engagement ring to a first date, mm -hmm. right? Consumers are really skeptical about signing anything this day and age, right? They want to want to advise uh, with somebody. So yeah, you meet somebody for the first time or you see a home that goes on the market, you, you, you find it online. Um, and you contact a real estate agent you've never talked to before and you say, hey, listen, um, I want to go see this house. Now, in the past, uh, a conversation would probably be like, hey, listen, um, no problem. I just want to verify, have you been pre-qualified with a lender? If you're a cash buyer, you, you know, do, can we verify your funds? In the event you fall in love with this house, I want to make sure that we have the means to uh, to go after this home, right? And the only thing we we're obligated to get signed at that point was just agency that explained your relationship. This is different. This is breaking down compensation, right? In term, in and term, agreements, yep. and both parties Duties. being in agreement to it. Yep. Yeah. Now, I agree with you. I think for the consumer to understand, here's the analogy that I would use. We're now in a world where and and how we got here is irrelevant, but there, there's, there's just been plenty of instances throughout our industry as realtors to where, um, you know, some we've got a, a warm body that wants to see a house. I'm a business owner dependent on commissions. I'm going to take a chance and go meet them yeah. and look at how good looking I am. And I'm going to, I'm going to wow them with, with that's my never, personality. That's never worked for you, oh, right? Are you Kill it. Uh, we're gonna, we're our personality and looks and all that are gonna take over, and they're just gonna want to work with me full time after yeah. that. That that's been the notion, right? Yeah. For for not everybody, yeah. but generally speaking, um, and I shouldn't even lump it into that general category or, yeah. or that common of a yeah. category, but you know what I mean. So now the analogy is the, the way I'm thinking of it from the consumer standpoint to understand is. You want to buy a car, you go to the dealership looking for a test drive. They don't just toss you the keys and say, yeah, I'll go for a joyride and come back whenever you want. Yeah. There's somebody in the car with you, you're leaving your license, whatever. Yeah. You know, I, I haven't done this in a while, I don't even know. But, yeah. but it's kind of similar in that light, right? Where it's like, okay, you want to test drive the car, you want to see this house. We need some information. We, we, need to, we need to establish some sort of an agreement in yeah. order for you to do so. Yeah. Because just in that test drive a car analogy, like you're entering somebody's home. Yeah. The day and age that we live in at this point, kind of scary, I yeah. guess, right? You never yeah. know who's coming in. So this way, if you're uh, entering a home as a consumer with a professional that has done their job to establish some sort of an agreement with you, yep. that's where it gets good for everybody, in my opinion. It does, right? And like, but I, I, with that being said, um, you know, 
good luck thinking that that's going to be the mindset <laughs> of the consumer sure. that just we like wait a second guy I just want to see a house yep. what are you talking about yep. right and will there be some real estate agents that don't get that form signed sure and you got to ask yourself if you're a consumer and you've got a real estate agent willing to risk their ability to practice real estate are you working with the best professional 100 percent. yeah and that's why i think yeah there's you know again uh we're taping this before it's released it's going to be released after these changes come into effect in our market august 17th is the national day of change yep. august 18th like if you're not uh you know uh, performing to these these requirements yep. you're not compliant you're breaking the law whatever you want to say but that's the reality and you make a great point of like okay if it, you know the consumer at some point is going to develop the the knowledge or the callus to this right because yep. you know especially for those that were just looking last week at homes and say they don't have an agent that they're that they've selected and yeah. that they're under an agreement with and their strategy has been let me just you know let me let me go on a website and find an agent that yep. can show it to me or let me call the listing agent whatever it may be now they're making that call this week and it's like totally different yeah. planet that you're living on yep. there's gonna there's gonna be I don't know if it's days weeks months years probably not the latter yeah but there's going to be an adjustment period yeah and you know for agents out there how well you come across initially to the consumer around this topic yeah. and then how well you're able to uh you know portray your value yeah you know convince them essentially to work with you yeah is, is going to matter and that value will have a dollar amount right. or a percentage on that buyer agreement right. that states that hey listen um, if cooperation if, if compensation cooperation were not given by the sellers the expectation is that I'm compensated from you right so that's a big change now national news headlines sellers don't have to pay commissions anymore it's now responsibility of the buyers here's what i need everybody to understand if historically speaking um generally buyers were paying their own agents for their representation let's just give a fictitious amount let's just say for they were paying them four percent of the purchase price for their duties okay now, we cannot be naive and think that the sales prices would look the same because that's a cost to the buyer and not the seller. So if sellers think that they're going to just not pay commissions out, which they have the ability to not offer and are. sell their home for the same amount of money, I would argue that you're extremely delusional. Well, and, and let's just make it current to the times. Yep. The the word that we're gonna hear thrown around probably for the next, I don't know, decade maybe, is affordability. Yeah. <laughs> right? So, it, it, you know, if you're expecting to sell your yeah. home in a market, generally speaking, where affordability concerns and problems and issues are apparent, and now you're asking the buyer pool yeah. out there to, find a way to come up with more money to purchase a yeah. home, that's going to be a problem. Or want to work with a buyer that's unrepresented. Let's think about what you just said. Mm -hmm. We are in a national affordability crisis. Mm -hmm. Affordability for a home has never been harder for buyers. Affordability for at, groceries. At that same time, at the same time that we're currently living in, Homeowners have never had more equity in their home than they do at this present time. So now we're sitting here with all this equity. Affordability is down here. Now there's an X. What we're saying is, well, the illusion is that, well, now there's the expectation that although affordability has never been harder, the buyer's also going to have to compensate for their own cooperation. I'm not saying that that can't be that that can't happen because legally it can. Given those circumstances, I fully suspect that more times 
than not, sellers will be offering compensation, especially given the market conditions that we're in. Yeah, I mean, our, our, our field, our, our recommendations, the conversations that we're gonna be having with sellers is, is around that, Yep. right? And, and you know, what's more important to you? The, the most amount of money that you walk away with from this sale or, you know, it's almost like a, a personal vendetta against yeah. offering buyer agency commission yeah, yeah, my, while you're selling. My anticipated um, objection handler, uh, and I keep repeating it, and hopefully agents pick up on it because there's truth behind it, and, and, and logical homeowners will uh, adapt to it, is you, you got to ask yourself two questions as a seller. Are you more attached to netting the most amount of money or confirming that somebody else doesn't get paid? You'll find that nine out of 10 homeowners will be agnostic around what somebody else would like to make for their time and efforts as you will how much you're going to walk away from. It's a net conversation, yeah. right? Well, and, and let's keep in mind too that we're dealing with uh, you know, a, a, a product of trade that is the, for most people, for the overwhelming majority of people in the world, much less Americans, the house they're buying or selling is their biggest financial asset, period. Yeah. Their biggest, you know, expense if they're buying moving forward. Yeah. Right. Uh, you know, if they're selling their, you know, their, their, their nest egg is tied to it. And yeah. For most people, right. In a big way. Yeah. Um, it's a big deal. We just saw, you know, we, we were part of the presentation yesterday where we saw uh, some stats and this is, is, it's actually increased and, and don't quote me, but I'm pretty sure the number was 89% of real estate transactions are with a realtor. And that's increased, you know, albeit slightly, it's always been on that high number, yeah. but the, it's increased in recent years. Yeah. So with technology, with savvy consumers, with the ability to do things on your own, if you really wanted to take the risk, yeah. realtors are still employed by consumers. Yeah. And that's not gonna go away because of what I just said about you know the biggest asset that you're dealing with financially, yeah. and it's your home. Yeah. There's a lot of emotion to it, there's a lot of importance to it. You know, you need you need shelter, you need a roof over your head, right? You need representation. Think about the people out there that want to go into situations without representation. Look at the people that defend themselves in court, Charles Manson. That's the party. <laughs> <laughs> at the end of the day, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kidding there, but at the end of the day, this is the largest purchase or sale likely in their entire life in that moment. They're going to want somebody on their side. They're going to want a trained professional, and there's a cost to that. Well, and, and I think all of that said to to you know potentially predict yep. that you know there there the, there shouldn't be a ton of change yeah. uh, happening out outside of the changes we discussed yeah. in terms of you know these new laws and regulations of how the industry operates and, and outside of yeah consumer behavior needing to adapt to okay well really I need to be you know selecting an agent first before I just go and 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 see 15 homes with with one agent or five different agents or whatever yeah. it is from there I mean we're you know we're the ones that are going to be dealing with the Paperwork changes that, that oh, yeah. are ahead, uh, you know, that's not going to be a major effect to the consumer. That's our job as professionals to know what we're doing there, to make sure that we have everything to protect our our clients contractually and, yep. and what have you. But but overall, I mean, not a big deal. Consumers are not going to feel a major adjustment. I say that because um, sellers still have the ability to offer compensation. The biggest adjustment consumers right. will feel is, um, and listen, it's gonna be a little bit awkward up front until it becomes the norm, especially if you purchased a home recently and the experience was different, you're going to have to sign an agreement prior to looking at homes. Right. 
of some sort. There's no there's no way around it. There's no loophole. Um, if it's a if it's a home listed in the MLS, okay. and you're looking at it with a real with a realtor, because a realtor means you're a member of the National Association of Realtors, and I want to get into that a little bit as well, right? Okay. These changes, um, yes, the states have made changes as well, but these changes that we have to abide by for NAR specifically. Um, we have to be members of NAR to be protected in this lawsuit. Lawsuit still hasn't even been court approved. We suspect, we suspect that it will be. Um, with that being said, I don't know what our world's gonna look like after this uh, acceptance. Um, as of right now, to be a member of our local real estate board, um, we have to be a member of National Association of Realtors to practice real estate. I don't know how long they're going to be able to mandate that. Well, and, and I, I hear you, and I guess my take is that, like, I don't care what it is, because at the end of the day, you know, the majority of the population acting as real estate agents, realtors, yeah. whatever you want to call it, is going to be operating in a manner that is out to, you know, protect the consumers, yep. represent the consumers' best interests. They're business owners, so so you know that they, they have that that incentive to do so to you know seek their highest and best uh, yep. outcome as well. And and whatever the association that the setup is, I think it's all going to be in the spirit of what's established from yep. here. The one thing we haven't discussed is. Essentially, and not to get into the weeds, but the Department of Justice has the ultimate is a big part of this conversation that we haven't mentioned, and it kind of all trickles down from there. And here we are. Yeah. So, like, the, the, I mentioned the spirit of things t directed to the consumer by us as professionals. I don't know if it's right to say whoever's left standing. Yeah. Uh, is is going to be doing that. And that's what's good. Yeah. The so, so you have the Department of Justice, which is federal, right? Right. And then you have Department of State, which is just your your your, your state governing body there. Um, ultimately, the Department of State will have more authority around how real sure. estate will be practiced yep. than even the Department of Justice. But I can tell you that. Both of those governing bodies are sitting back right now to see how this plays out. Mm -hmm. And I fully anticipate further guidance and, and, and adjustments that we're going to have to make. Our, our forms are going to change again. And listen, <laughs> my days are spent on the phone and responding to questions, emails, texts with Keller Williams Real Estate Agents all day, every day. It's been like this for a, a while and yeah. it's going to continue yep. uh, for a while it's as a well. It's out. a lot. And listen, it's just, it's human nature to, uh, to be resistant to change. Um, but I, again, there's going to be a lot of good that comes out of this. I, I do believe that. Mm -hmm. And there will also be unintended consequences right. as well. And yeah. we'll see what, we'll see what that looks like. We'll unpack that as we go. I yep. think at the end of the day, you know, the, the important thing to know is that, you know, commissions have always been negotiable. Yep. You know, how we got to these points of lawsuits and leading to these changes. Yeah. Nothing's really changed. A, a seller can can offer 10% to yeah. a buyer's agent if they wanted, yeah. or a dollar, or nothing. Yep. Uh, what, you know, <laughs> what's changed is like now it's not going to be offered uh, uh, visibly through the MLS. Yeah. Now, I will add, we are allowed to market commissions to the public. So you will... You are, and uh, our team is. Right. The brokerage, uh, I can't put anything out on behalf of Keller Williams. Correct. Right. Individual agents can market their listings to the public so yep. that the public buyers know and have visibility, uh, you know, without their agent having to respond to them in yeah. cases that, okay, you know, I don't have to worry about paying my buyer's agent out of pocket in yeah. this case or negotiating. Yep. I think that's one thing that we haven't discussed is it's not just a hard, okay, now buyers have to pay yeah. if they're not uh, being compensated by the be, by the seller. Mm -hmm. It's negotiable. You can ask the seller to compensate to it. It's you always can negotiable. You can a concession and, 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 and work it into the equation that way. It's always been negotiable. Yes. Listen, if a seller is completely against offering anything out and they were to receive multiple offers... 
And your offer included asking the seller for compensation. And after that compensation is considered, they're still netting the most amount of money. You'll find more often than not that that seller will be open to it at that time. They just need to see what they're walking away from. And there's not that clarity up front for them to make up their minds in some cases. Well, and it's ultimately just going to promote more transparency around each individual offer, each individual deal, yep. which is good. Yeah. Yep. It's not to say that that wasn't there before either. Correct. So we're, we're just, you know, we're, 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 we're going <laughs> with what we have to, right? Yeah. And it's all good. I mean, anything else that we could talk about this for hours, but we're, we're going to. You know, a, a lot of it in like, listen, when I got licensed, uh, I was a wild man and I had to be reeled back in, but I love the sport of our industry. I love being able to negotiate and I feel like we've gotten away from that based on the market conditions. Like guys, listen, top agents would prefer to negotiate and actually make an impact on the net results for their clients. Lazy agents just want everything completely fixed and easy and I do this and I'm going to make that, right? Well, and I think, you know, uh, you just gave a hint to the consumer on, you know, what to look for in an agent. Yeah. Right? If, if frankly, if they're not excited about everything ahead. Yeah. Right? If they're not like, yeah, negotiations coming back, this is going to be awesome. Yeah. You know, make sure that you dive in. Like, it's, it's going to, you're going to have to. You know, with the risk of having to pay your agent directly, I guess, is a worst case scenario potentially. Yeah. Listen, we're going to lose a lot of real estate agents yeah. that just, they, they, they just, they're, they're so against change. They can't, they don't want to wrap their head around it and they're too lazy to look at what the opportunity really is. Uh, I said this to somebody the other day and it was almost like half like an accident, but I was like, listen, you can embrace and earn or cave and burn. Love that. Right? Love Those that. that embrace it are going to look at this as opportunity. And for every agent that gets out of the business, that agent's going to be able to grow theirs. And it's going to be because they're waking up with a different mindset every single day. Love it. Put that on a bumper sticker. Damn. All right. Uh, we'll finish with one more CYA. I think we did pretty good here. But yeah. uh, if you're an agent listening to this, please refer to your broker and your local board and your, your state for, for any particulars. Do not take per, uh, legal or professional advice from us. Yep. Uh, and and also to, to consumers, if there is any reference to a commission here in specific, it is not referencing a fixed uh, amount in the industry and commissions are and always have been negotiable and will continue to remain so. <laughs> You're not an attorney, but I did stay at Holiday You're Express. Right. I, I think you covered uh, all of our bases and then some. <laughs> Uh, thank you for tuning in. Stay tuned for more. This is going to be exciting as it, as it unfolds here. And we'll keep you updated as always. And the good news, guys, is the Anthony Butera team, our agents are fully informed. They're yeah. ready to get to work. And they're looking at this as opportunity. Yeah, I mean, we, we've known about this since March 15th. And we've been a full-time focus of five yeah. months now. Uh, yeah. leading up to it. So, so we're ready. So check us out, anthonybuterateam.com. Uh, as always, Anthony and Jason here with the Rochester Real Estate Show. Thanks, guys.